Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to um, give some people some time to um, go ahead and, uh, and get logged in. Good morning. Happy Saturday, everybody. It's a beautiful day in Montgomery. Um, hope everybody's staying safe and um, being responsible. Um, like I said, uh, I'm going to um, give some more people some time to log in um, before I get started because I only have 30 minutes um, to um, to tell you about myself and um, my story and um, my creativity, the process, and, uh, and some of my work. Um, thank you guys that are, are here for, for tuning in. I really, really, really appreciate um, the support right now. Um, for those that are just signing in, I wanted to um, give it a couple minutes before I actually get started uh, for the sake of time. Um, wanted to get everybody in and give everybody an opportunity to uh, to hear all of this and to and to see all of this. Thank you, Henry. Okay, well, good morning again. Uh, my name is Tony Tony. Um, no, I didn't stutter. A lot of people ask me uh, about my name and uh, was it a, um, a creative thing? Um, no, I actually married um, my husband whose last name is Tony. Um, so I feel like it was um, ordained, uh, aligned with the stars that uh, I'd be given that, uh, that name. Um, it just ties into everything. Um, sorry, Alice. <laughs> Um, uh, I, um, am originally from, uh, Compton, California, uh, born and raised. Um, my family moved to Long Beach, the east side of Long Beach when I was 13. Um, I feel like I've always been, um, a creative and I know a lot of people say that, but some things are just innate. Some things you just can't run from. And I think that's how I began. It was something that I couldn't really run from. Um, I had to find things to do. I had to find ways to, to keep myself busy. Um, I loved playing with dolls. I didn't like to share. And that ties into a lot of the work that I do now, um, not, not wanting to share. I'm the oldest of uh, four girls. And I had to share a lot of my stuff. So my art was a way of me being able to do something that I didn't have to share. Um, I had to share my dolls, I had to share my bike, I had to share my skates, um, whatever I had, they had. Um, so creating was a, a way for me to escape from that. Um, I played with a lot of Barbie dolls um, growing up, uh, as you can see in the background, you know, you kind of see some of my dolls. I'll show you guys some of those in a second. Um, but I didn't have, or my my parents, my mom didn't have the finances to go out and buy the Barbie clothes, the extra Barbie clothes. So I, um, I would make my own. Um, maybe a couple of Saturdays out the month, my mom would have us dump all the, the drawers out and kind of go through and find all these mixed match socks. And some of them just didn't have a mate. So what do you do with them? Well, I decided to make some Barbie clothes out of them. Um, since I couldn't <laughs> since I couldn't get any, I just, you know, made my own. And well, okay, Barbie's gonna need something to sleep on. So being resourceful, 
dryer lint might work. Dryer lint might work. So let me make a, a sleeping bag or some, some bedding for my Barbie. So that's, um, that's how I knew I thought differently from a lot of other people, um, uh, people that were around me. Um, the um, environment that I grew up with, a lot of people had only a few choices. Uh, that was sports or entertainment. Um, and I really didn't see myself in, in either of those fields. Um, so creating was actually, um, was, was my escape. I loved drawing. I loved, um, just coloring. I loved bright colors. I think that tied into, uh, me growing up in Southern California. Um, I, I like to, um, give credit to my my father in actually introducing me to the arts um on weekends he would come and pick me up and uh, take me to los angeles and visit the cam museum um, which is the california african american art museum in los angeles um seeing all of those works was all inspiring to me and as a child not really growing up with um I'm not going to say not growing up with a lot of culture because there was a lot of culture around, but just seeing what black folks could do. Going into a building and seeing that people actually came to to look at a piece of, of artwork that came to look at a painting um, and, and stare at it for hours. That That was amazing to me that one person actually did that that one person actually did that. And I knew in my head, that's something that I eventually wanted to achieve. Even at like nine and 10, I was cognizant of, of that feeling of that emotion that art can give a child. So imagining what this would convey to an adult. I remember my first painting that really changed me and transformed me. I didn't know who the artist was. I didn't even know that, um, these two paintings were done by one and the same. And a lot, you'll hear a lot of African-American people use this uh, piece of artwork and this artist as a point of reference for when they realized that black folks did paintings. And that was by Ernie Barnes. Now, if you don't know Ernie Barnes story, he has an impeccable story of how he uh, was an artist, but he became an athlete, football player playing uh, professional football, and then returning back to his roots, which was the arts. Um, the TV show Good Times, the the painting of the the, uh, the shack at the very beginning, that's his work. Well, that's the TV show that a lot of black folks watched growing up. And, you know, to know that um, he did that was, it, it was stories that you heard. It's something that you could visualize. You can kind of feel the, the heat in the room. Everybody's sweaty. Everybody's dancing. Everybody's having a good time. Um, it was relatable to a lot of folks, even as a child, I, I saw that. Well, going back to the cam, I was able to see one of his paintings titled Miss America. And if you've ever seen that painting, you'll know that it's um, an image of a, uh, a, a black woman who's carrying these two bags. Her build is like she's muscular she's she's almost i would say built like a football player the way ernie barnes kind of um uh painted her uh her her anatomy her arms and her legs she's just really 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 strong and this painting was uh created back in i want to say 1970. so looking at that at like i said at the age nine and ten i was thinking that's a that's a strong woman that's a, that's a very strong woman and a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to go back and um, and take a look at it. Um, and I just had a whole different perspective of, of what strength is and how he was able to convey that and how um, he just captured the essence of a strong black woman that no matter what, we have to keep going. We have to keep on moving. And I apply that to to my life as an artist. I've loved art, I've loved creating. I, I I had a passion for it, but I ended up, you know, going the education route and putting that passion into my children. 
um i call my my students my children my kids um and i i got to the point where i also want to um apply that to myself i want to grow as an artist and so that's what happened um about two years ago uh i was invited to go to a um an event hosted by 21 dreams uh, it was an art walk and i ran into one of my uh great friends slash co-worker lithia edwards hey Lint. and uh she <laughs> she uh kind of gave me some words of encouragement and then i you know ran into um one of my old principals anthony brock who grabbed me by the arm and said hey do you know kevin king and i said no i don't really know anybody and he said, hey, this is Kevin and met Kevin and uh, became a, a part of King's Canvas. And from that, um, hooked up with, with Tracy and um, uh, her organization and uh, with, um, I'm sorry, help me out, y'all. Artists on Tap, thank you. With Artists on Tap and uh, just connecting with people and I think that's the biggest thing to get from this is to um yes lengthy we have been scribbling ever since uh is to to find a a connection find a connection if you don't have it in your community in your environment social media is like everything right now you can connect with um you can connect with people all over the world don't be afraid to reach out don't be afraid to reach out um Okay, with that said, I um, I love to create using all types of materials. I'm in love with acrylics because I'm not patient. And um, my background, I have a, a bachelor's in art and uh, a master's in arts education. So I'm familiar with all types of medias, but acrylics my favorite because I don't have the patience and it dries really fast and I love what I can do with it. Um, I also, um, was introduced to some paint pens. So I want to take a minute and show you guys my space. Uh, Lenthe has been commenting on um, what I have going on in the background and I'm gonna flip the camera around so, um, so y'all can see. Okay, so I was introduced to this artist right here this is um, Delita Martin's work. Uh, my cousin Ava had introduced me to her uh, about a year ago and I looked into her and I have a background in printmaking as well. So when I saw it, I was in love. And when artists have stuff, I, I'm going to immediately support. So you'll see this here. Um, I'm also a huge fan of Basquiat. And I am one of the fortunate ones to have, yes, you see it. That's exactly what it is. Get in on it. Who's that? Barbie, yes. A signature Barbie. Uh, Basquiat, yet. Yeah, no, you can't have it. She's all mine. Um, you'll see uh, dolls that I uh, collected from Mexico. Um, my my pop uh doll down here um and this woman here is significant to me and my mom is is watching so i already know she's probably crying right now um my first words were wonder woman believe it or not uh and so i'm, I'm you'll see a lot of not a lot of but i try to collect wonder woman stuff as well um so this is my space um behind me here i have uh my artwork that i have hung up on the walls my ode to compton which is significant um again to me and in my upbringing uh the colors of what makes up that that city the graffiti even the blue and the red i don't have to explain that but um <laughs> Um, I love bold and bright colors of my work, so I try to keep stuff in my um, in my space that's going to uh, inspire me. And it can be my own work, it can be textures, it can be work from other artists. 
Um, I love collecting supplies and I say collecting supplies because if it's on sale, I'm going to buy it. Um, so here are a lot of my acrylics that I use here. I'm a collector of brushes. I think most artists are. We love a good brush. We love a good clearance sale. Um, I had to be very, very strategic in my space. And I thank my husband, my wonderful husband, for uh, all of this. Uh, I had been talking about getting back into my art, like I said, two years ago. And he was like, get in the car. And we went and bought my art table. And I've been collecting art supplies ever since. Um, so with that, I have to be very strategic with my space. So we converted this closet. Let me back up. We converted this closet. And that's where I keep, you know, some uh, some of my supplies. So I have some smaller canvases up here. And I have some colored pencils and pastels in there, um, drawers or what have you. But here's my, my, my ingenuitive side. Those are my paint, acrylic paint markers. And I just took some, um, some aluminum cans and uh, color coded them so that I have them um, available and I can see them. Um, again, because of the tight space, I, I like to hang all of my work there. So you'll see some of my smaller pieces that are done on wood up here. I mean, Amy, you got to maximize your space. You, you have to maximize your space. And like up here, I see some extra wall space. So eventually, um, the more I do, it'll just cover up these walls. Now, in addition to my own um, works that I like to look at, I like to... Uh, draw off the inspiration that I get from other artists and this big one up here is from one of my uh, I call her friend classmate we went to college together is uh, Kelly Newsom um, that's her piece in the center there um, uh, Chris Clark's is this one over here and I have what else do I have Krista Forrest is there. I have um, a Lithia photograph. I'm still trying to, you know, get in on it before she blow up, blow up uh, there. And another artist who I saw off of um, Instagram is um, Glenn Nunez. And this is one of his pieces. And his his work kind of reminds me of, of Charles White. So this is, you know, like my inspiration wall you know things that i look at it could be the colors it could be like i said the the texture of something um up here you'll see uh, some of the the shows that i've been in and um, acceptance letters uh just to know that and i'll flip the camera back around just to uh just to know that i've been doing this for um officially like two years this summer in, in two years i've been able to accomplish a lot of things that um, a lot of people spend a lot, a lot of years doing. And not to say that I haven't, you know, put my time in, you know, I have, I, I have. And um, I just, I'm, I'm blessed uh, to be able to um, have this opportunity and, um, and share all of this with you guys. Uh, what I'd like to do now is I like to show you some of my work not just the ones that are on the wall but kind of give you a um more detailed look into um into some of my pieces um this piece right here is probably my favorite piece right now um turn it back around come on camera okay this is one entitled pink ponytails and she, to me, she is the epitome of childhood. Little girls still being little girls, not trying to be too grown, um, hairstyles that are age appropriate. And there's just a look about her face that is, is questioning. Uh, the gaze that she has in the eyes is like she's either looking at someone who's speaking to her. Um, she's 
thinking of something to to say or to respond with um I, I just love everything about this i love the the process of uh creating her i'm just really 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 in love with her um i think paintings that i spend the more time with that i let breathe um are ones that i'm more emotionally connected with and i had to realize even though i'm working with a medium that dries really fast and i can produce something you know really quickly i still have to follow the process of creation and creation is not something that's done in a day and that's as an artist that's something that i had to um i had to uh come to terms with you know everything's not not quick not fast like that um okay so i want to show you guys some of some of my paintings oh i gotta show you my chair i'm in love with my chair when i tell y'all i love this chair it's comfortable because i'm showing y'all my space um I love the tufting here in the back. I have that there. Just got to have anywhere to put it. But loving my thrift find. I got that for $20 at the thrift store. So don't sleep on thrift stores. Okay. Um, here is a self-portrait. Um, a self-portrait of myself when I was a little girl at the park. Um eating watermelon of course it's one of uh one of the pictures that i used to look at back uh when i was younger in photo albums y'all remember photo albums y'all remember photo albums we don't have photo albums anymore that's like a lost art i wish we could bring that back we've got all of our pictures on the phone um this painting right here i think is my mom's favorite i keep referencing my mom because i want to show her love um this is titled I Want Some Too. And it's entitled I Want Some Too because there were several times that the ice cream man would come by and we didn't have no money. <laughs> we didn't have no money for the ice cream truck. So it's it's very um meaningful to me painting this and uh reflecting on, you know, times when somebody has something and, and you didn't and having to um convince your friend or your neighbor hey if you get a popsicle can you split it with me or <laughs> or something of, of those natures you, you really uh figure out how to um barter and and bargain so uh again i think the expression on her face is looking like you know she's she's asking for something she wants some and you know the little girl in the background that obviously she has uh and the different things that you'll see on um on an ice cream truck um this one down here I, I like painting on wood and I was introduced to painting on wood when I went to um the artist colony um this past October uh down at Lake Martin painting on wood was something I hadn't done um and so I really enjoyed that process. And so a couple of these pieces are, are just that. Again, um, these are acrylic and um, some of them are acrylic and gouache. I like textures. I like textures. I like patterns, excuse me. So uh, these next two pieces have, uh, have both. Um, the drawings of the foliage in the background and the painting of the implied rope as i call it around the border um i love i love those um here's another one very similar this is these are ones when i was just um kind of getting back into it uh with the head wrap and um you'll see a lot in my work are um, different skin tones and so i want to make sure that um, representation matters African-American women come in all shades and colors. And so I want to make sure that the women and children that I'm painting are a reflection of just that. A lot of times we don't see ourselves in magazines. And growing up in the 80s, I didn't see dolls that look like me. 
I didn't see dolls that had, you know, my complexion either. They were like really brown or, or really, really yellow. And so I want to make sure because I have that responsibility, I have that uh, ability to do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to. And I, I want to make sure that we we are all seen. Um, here's another one. This one was done with the, the paint markers. So um, just playing around with different things. I try not to put myself in into a bubble. You know, I'm always evolving, I think, uh, by what I'm inspired by. And um, like I said, I've always grown up loving bold and bright colors. Um, this one here, you'll see a lot of my works aren't really, really big. And that's something that I'm trying to to work on is um, painting larger. So this piece was pretty big for me. And what I love about her is, is she's like in bloom. You know, if you take a look at it from the bottom up, the green shirt is almost like the stem. And then she she is the flower. You know, and her hair is part of her petals. Um, then this one here, this one is a, a watercolor. Actually, no, it's a mixed media. It's watercolor and oil pastels. So, um, again, just challenging myself and, and pushing, pushing myself to, um, to do more. Um, let's see. I think I have shown you guys everything. So if y'all have any questions for me, let me know. Yeah, Amy, it, it really does changing up the, the canvas size and the dimensions. It, it does make you make you think differently, especially if it's um, intuitive and um, you don't have a process. And a lot of my work speaks to me. Um, I'll just start with a circle and a circle becomes a face and then that face becomes a personality. And that personality drives me and directs me to what the finished product um, may look like. Um, I want to take this time to thank uh, everybody for spending their Saturday morning with me. Um, I want to thank you guys for um, supporting and, and staying on with me these these 30 minutes. I want to thank um, I want to thank everybody who um, has helped me on this journey so far. Ooh, my favorite female artist. Um, my favorite female artist is uh, a woman by the name of Bisa Butler. And Bisa Butler is a, um, I guess you could call her a textile artist. She makes these beautiful uh, quilts that look like um, actual paintings. Um, I can show you some of Bisa's work. This is uh, an example of Bisa's work. And she makes these huge quilts that, um, like I said, that look like paintings. And uh, she has given me a, a lot of advice um, over the last year. Um, she and I share the same story, both art educators and both stepped out on faith and um, uh, pursued pursued an art career. Um, I see my husband is commenting that I didn't thank my son, um, <laughs> Cam. Uh, hi, Cam. Uh, I wanna thank my son for just being that light, um, being that positive energy that I need um, if I'm not feeling it. Um, he's he's very supportive um for a 10 year old and he's gonna make some woman um a very happy happy husband one day uh but no i i just want to um make sure that i am being true to myself and um acknowledging all of those who have helped me um in whatever capacity get to this point right here right now um and like i said that would be uh Kalanji Gilchrist with 21. That would be Kevin King with King's Canvas. That would be Tracy with um, Artists on Tap. 
um, that would be Lynthia, that would be Michelle Browder. Oh my God, Michelle Browder. The things that she's doing with um, her, her program is, is life changing. Life changing to say the least for, for all that are for all that are involved in, in the arts community and the opportunities that she's giving us to, to make history in in Montgomery. She was also one of my um my first collectors. So I'll always I'll always be thankful for her. Um like I said, Kevin and, and Kalanji give me the opportunity to be parts of um of their program. Um the museum the Montgomery Museum, thank you for, for this opportunity, for um, just being able to be considered, to be considered. So um, I am, I guess, a minute over my time. So if you guys don't have any questions for me, I'll, um, I'll go ahead and close. But to remind you guys, if you're, oh, what was the question about my mom? I'm sorry just talking what was the question about my mom do I have any artwork called mom and the theme after your mom I started something I started something and that's one of those paintings that um, I have not finished yet and I'm saying this because it was supposed to be a surprise uh, <laughs> so I it's something that I have pondered but there's a lot of things that I can just put out. There's a lot of things that I can just go ahead and, and create just because I feel like creating. But ones that, um, the ones that have more meaning behind it um, take a little bit longer because it's like, it's a piece of me. It's more personal. It's, it's more personal. And so, um, yes, I have something in the works um, for my mom. Um, who is an amazing, amazing person. Y'all keep y'all, keep her in your prayers. Um, she's, she fell and uh, she broke her hand. So um, she's kind of going through it right now. But um, short answer, yes. Yes, I do. Um, were there any other questions? I don't think so. Um, if it is, can you guys put it back in the um, in the comments? Because I don't. I want to make sure that I answered everybody's question, and I want to make sure I shot everybody out. Um, what is for lunch, husband? Whatever you decide to bring home. Thanks, mom. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close out again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to all my friends and my family, um, my um, my peeps. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for, for watching. And um, oh, thank you, Jill. Thank you so much, Jill. Thank you to all of my my supporters, my collectors who, um, who have tuned in today. I, I love and appreciate you all. Thanks, Aunt Darlene. Love y'all. Okay. Love you, Mom. Thanks, y'all. Have a good day.